coming. Good to see you all. I am uh, Parker and am the VP of sales of our PEST organization. We have some new faces here tonight. Thanks for thanks for coming. And um, I know coming to these trainings can be a sacrifice. I know a lot of you guys are grinding in school and you have other jobs and stuff. So thanks for making the time. I know I've shared this a bunch, but your your return on your time here will be really, really good. Like if you if you can come to these trainings, learn these principles, practice them, um, it'll make you a lot of money. And you'll show up those first couple of weeks instead of having to get kicked in the teeth, you'll you'll be making sales, hopefully. Uh, so anyway, thanks for coming. Tonight we are going to be um, it's our fifth training, and we're doing the rate card. And we will not be doing as much review on like the initial approach and some of the early stuff in the sale. And so if this is your first time coming tonight and you're for sure selling, we, we need to get you caught up. And the best way to get caught up is utilizing our online resources and working with your um, your, your manager. So that's, I, I would make a big push to go and, and make that happen, so. Cool, couple announcements, uh, Slack, Gusto, if, if you are hired, these are two things that you need to get done. Slack is how we, how we know that things like tonight are happening. And we're going to start using Slack to make announcements for summer stuff. So like start dates, um, housing, solicitor permits. Like there's a lot that goes into this that Theron is working on operationally. Um, he's, he's working pretty long hours right now to like make sure that we're up and, and ready for summer stuff. And so um, help him with that. Make sure that if you are hired, that you're on Slack and that you're communicating on that. Uh, sometimes you have it downloaded, but if your notifications aren't on, then you won't be alerted when we're like pushing out messages. So if you can turn your notifications on that, that would help help us a lot as well. Gusto is the app or the, uh, it's, not less, it's not really an app. It's like a software that we use to pay you. So if you want to get paid this summer and not work for free, then get your Gusto done. And then YouTube channels, whether you're hired yet or not, that can be an awesome resource to just go check out our training materials. Um, our bread and butter with these trainings is this stuff and working one-on-one -on -one with your managers. But the YouTube material can be really awesome to supplement. So we have some of our top reps that have sold a lot of accounts we have live sales with real customers and stuff. So you can go check that out online if you want. Um, confirm start dates with Theron this week. So we need to know your, this is mainly for housing. So please, he's probably reached out to you. If you um, haven't gotten back to him, please, please do that. We need badge photos. So part of your look in the summer is you're gonna have like an ID photo. And we want those to look professional, preferably like up against like a white wall and just try to look sharp in those uh, pictures. Cause like a lot of times the customer, if they're nervous about you, um, they'll, they want to look at like your badge and you want to look professional. If uh, you have, if you have a picture you already liked, it doesn't have to be against the back of a white wall. I can take out the background. So well, just send me one like that you already think looks good or have your roommate take one or whatever. I don't really care. If you don't send it, Darren will find your ugliest picture on Instagram, on, on Facebook. Yeah, don't let me find a picture. <laughs> like, like, a mirror, like a mirror, like a mirror, like a mirror pic from like your middle school days. Don't go way back. Deep, deep in the archives. You get close to Instagram, everything. Yeah, yeah. Parker's got a pic of like. Oh, anyway, everyone's got theirs. Tyson, Tyson Bones is like wearing a backpack. Looks like he's six years old. <laughs> You got some good pics on that. Yeah. Anyway, get a good yeah, picture. It's also a picture we use for like our dashboard and internal social media and stuff. So just so you know. Yeah. Yeah. If you have like a 10 day in the summer, we'll announce it on our Instagram. You want to look cool to all your friends. So anyway. Okay. Upcoming trainings. Uh, March 13th is the next one that's here. And then. Um, is that right? Back to back weeks like that, there? Uh, that's, uh, it should say, I think I should say the 27th. Yeah. Sorry. That's all good. And then in the, in the tweener weeks, we're still doing Rexburg and Cedar City. We're going to keep doing that all the way up and, and, and through uh, April. So 
I think that uh, we were going to have a lot of doors or uh, reps on the doors in April, but we will still be doing these trainings to support the people that are, that are here. So uh, I think by the middle of April, we'll have like 50, 60 reps on the doors and there will, there will be a ramp. We'll have over 100 reps on the doors. We were just looking yesterday by May 1st. So um, anyway, recruiting incentive. We had some people earn this recruiting incentive. If you bring two friends to come work for us, uh, you got a really cool hoodie. That was a February incentive. Um, a couple people are close to that. And we're on pace to have 200 reps on the doors this summer, which is exciting. So, okay, we're going to get into a review. Um, there's five steps to the sales cycle. And today we're not going to so much review these first couple of steps we're going to we're going to spend a lot of time reviewing reviewing the inspection and then tonight we're practicing showing the price to, to the customer um however i briefly want to just explain and review like the what this is okay initial approach is like your first couple of seconds with the customer this is where you're trying to get really credible and uh, usually they have that fight or flight in them. They're nervous about you and who you are. And you're simply trying to introduce them by telling them your name, a name drop of someone that you're doing work with or a street name. You're engaging the customer and then you're going to um, kind of put a hook in with asking them who treats their home currently or tell them about the discount. So um, that's our initial who can tell me a lot of times you're going to get resistance, right? From customers who can tell me the three steps that we use to overcome objections. So when you do get an objection, what are the three steps? Jackson. Empathy, response close. Cool. So the first is empathy. When you get resistance or you get an objection, you want to empathize. Why is that important? They feel heard. Okay, perfect. So they feel heard. What is a tailored response? So after you empathize, customer says, hey, we're okay, we're not gonna do this. Uh, we, we don't see bugs. My empathy might be okay, no, no problem. Solving no problem. The tailored response is, uh, what, what would a good tailored response be to a no bugs objection? Let's hear it loud, someone. Melissa, let's hear it. Um, we can say like, oh yeah, the other neighbors have to say the same thing. Okay, that's a good start. Start to the tailored response. The a uh, little bit just so there's a little bit more meat on that bone. I might I might be like, um, most of the neighbors are not seeing too much either with pest activity. They're mainly doing this for preventative reasons, and um, so they're trying to get ahead of it. And if you're willing to try that out, I would be willing to do it for super cheap. And that last part was the close. I can't help myself. We have to close out. <laughs> tailored response. So it's empathy, tailored response, close. So a close might be looping back to the discount. Um, it also might be a question, right? What would a good question there be instead of what I did? What what instead of that, what might be another way you can take that? Emily. Have you ever had the home inspection issue? Good. Yeah. <clears throat> awesome. Yeah. When, when was the last time you had the home treated? Or have you ever had the home treated? Would be a really good close there to, to close that loop, right? Okay. Um, that's awesome. Before we get into the review here, I want to have just one rep come up and just show a really solid initial approach with the insider response and then overcoming one objection. Who's brave enough to do that? You want to do it? Let's have Jackson do it. Let's do it. Uh, Jackson's going to be on the doors on April 15th, so uh, <laughs> sign this. Yeah. Okay, I'll be a, I'll be a customer. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you today? Good. What's up? So, we are just going to be doing some work for Ian. Okay, I'm going to let you know what's going on. No, no. Okay, how are you doing? Yeah, yeah. Uh, great, great question. question. Well, my trucks are just going to be here today and tomorrow. Okay, so you need to come out for your pest control. Um, yeah, we don't we don't have anyone. I think we're okay though. We don't see any bugs. Awesome. Yeah, and totally, that's, that's completely fine. Um, just to kind of keep you in the loop. Ian and a couple other neighbors, they weren't seeing too many bugs either. Mm -hmm. The reason they're just hopping on our services is to take care of that preventative treatment, and we're just doing it for really cheap. So if we can fit you in while we're here, about 50%. Okay. What do you charge? Yeah, great question. What's the square footage? 
3200 Okay. Well, all I got to do is a quick inspection on the outside of the home. I can get you a free quote. The gate on the right or the left? Yeah, there's a gate. How long would that take? Yeah, it'll be super quick. You just want to throw some shoes on and meet you in the backyard. Okay, awesome. That was great. Let's get in the hand. Good job, dude. That was sweet. Great job. Um, what'd you guys like? That was awesome. Before we get into the inspection review, let's just a couple of key takeaways from what Jackson just did. Yeah. I like his head nods. He had good head nods at great times. Yeah, love it. Yeah, those head nods can be awesome as you're trying to transition in and like get to that next segment of the sales cycle and you're looking for a positive response from the customer. It can be a really nice subliminal way to like stack the deck in your favor a little bit. So, yeah. I'm oh, sorry, caught your, either of you guys. Yeah, he was just super uh, comfortable and confident about what he was saying. And he was talking about. Cool. Love it. Kyron? Yeah, I liked his speed. He uh, kept the same speed even when you get the objection. Mm. It was really calm. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes we have a temptation to speed up when we get resistance um, and staying like playing your game and staying at your speed is huge. It shows that you're confident <laughs> and that you're not backing down. So that's huge. Good job, man. Maybe one more. Tanner? Yeah, his metaverbals are solid. Like, he uh, doesn't get phased when, you know, you say, like, I'm not seeing anything else. Like, he knows exactly where to go, and that goes back to the fact that he knows the framework. Like, the back the same. Yeah. Jackson sold last summer for five weeks or something like that and um, kicked butt in the time that he was out there. So it works. That pitch works. Jackson's going to kill it this year. I got my money on him. Okay. We're going to... Uh, review the inspection. So the inspection is like a fancy word for presentation, okay? So the porch is all about like getting credible, telling them why you're there, seeing if you can get some buying signs, um, you know, uh, but, and, and, and if you do that right, you're gonna get five to 10, maybe 15 chances a day to present, which is where we call it an inspection where you're basically like actually getting into pest control and what we do and why they need it and all that stuff. So this is like the meat and potatoes of the sale. This is where it's actually fun. This is where you get to like be yourself and ask questions and not feel as robotic as you do on the porch, right? So we, we covered this last time and we're gonna review it tonight. So there's Mr. Barber, the barber shop. <laughs> Is she in a robe? The customer? Uh, she did uh, some sort of uh, gown. Karen <laughs> <laughs> would sell this lady 1,000%. And Barbara, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she did in a robe. When Karen sees a, a nice lady in a bathrobe, is just like, yeah. Come on, man. Senior discount. Yeah. Senior discount. Senior discount. Are you over 65? I, I got to do a discount. So, um, yeah, we always make jokes that Kyron's really good at selling grandmas. So, sorry. It's an insect. Yeah, that's there. Okay, so review of the inspection. First thing you're going to do is you want to make sure that they come with you. So, they're off their porch now. Sometimes they might come with you. Sometimes they're going to meet you in the backyard. Um, that's, in, that's important. There's some people that might not be able to, they might be in a wheelchair or it might be super rainy out, but I would say 80 to 90% of these inspections or presentations, you want to have them come with you because this is where you get to like make the deal happen, right? Introduce yourself, shake their hands. Um, I want to take that fist bump off. That was like a COVID thing. And I think it's, it's way more professional to just shake, shake their hand. So um, yeah. Ask a couple questions. Why do we ask these two questions specifically? I know I asked this probably last time, but why, why these two questions? How long have you been in the area and have you ever had the home professionally serviced? Why are these good questions to ask? What do they tell you about the customer? Thoughts? Yeah. Um, for at least a tells you uh, how would how will they know about the okay. house? Yeah, yeah. If they've ever had the home treated, then they know something about the pest control industry. So you're like, if they if they've never had the home treated or never had pest control done, it's going to be a lot more of an educational sale. Like you're going to be like a school teacher, right? Like, um, this is why people get pest control, and this is you know this is what it is. This is what we're going to do. 
some of our markets, like they've had three, four people in the past, and so they know the drill. So you don't need to get like super granular with them on like what technicians do. You're just gonna do a little bit more comparing and contrasting as to why they should choose us versus their thing, right? But sometimes if they never had someone, it, it's gonna be more educational, right? Uh, There's another Tyler. Do you have a hand that went up? Oh yeah. And then yeah, knowing how long they've been there, like if they're familiar with what the bugs are, if they're new from a different state. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, they're like, yeah, we're brand new here. Um, we just moved here from another spot. Those can be awesome because then you, they kind of look to you as like a form of like, um, like information on the pest control industry, and uh, that can be that can be really awesome. But yeah, you want to know that info so you can tailor the rest of the presentation to them, right? Um, and then the three things, uh, need, value, and urgency. So what is the need? Like when I'm, when, I'm, when I'm in the backyard and I've asked these questions and I'm transitioning into need, value, urgency, what am I starting with when it comes to need? Why would someone buy pest control? Yeah, they have bugs. Or they're worried about future bugs, right? Park, do you have something? Sounds like it's going to say preventable. Yeah, might be now issue, might be like, I'm worried about a future issue. We're playing off either one of those two, right? That's where you start on your inspection is at that point, hopefully you figured out like, hey, you have this issue or you're asking questions to see if they have one. If not, then you're going to kind of reposition yourself and make it more about like future tense, peace of mind stuff, okay? Value, what is the value thing all about? Why why is value important on when you're presenting when it comes to pest control? How we feel the bugs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, kind of a violent way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so if they understand the need, but they don't understand the value, they might be at Target or home, wherever you get to Home Depot, um, getting stuff and doing it themselves. So they might not be sold on you killing their bugs. It might be about like, I want to kill my own bugs. So the value is like what we do, how often we come, where we apply the service, like all that stuff, right? Urgency, what's that about? Why is urgency essential in making a sale? How? A lot of people throw out like, oh, I'll think about it. Can you come back? And 99% of the time, if you come back, they're like, no, I'm good. Yeah. They don't want to spend money. Yep. So getting them on board while it's available is the best option. 100%. Yep. So we talk about this idea of like Black Friday. We're trying to create like a Black Friday feel in the customer. People go crazy over Black Friday because there's a discount available. It's limited resource, or limited time. And there's like this scarcity and like inventory feel. And that's the vibe you're trying to create on the door. And it, uh, pest control is emotional, right? And so you're trying to like create that emotion in a customer and get them to buy when they're emotional. If you let people not buy when they're emotional and then they go back in, usually they go straight to the budget. Like, oh, I don't know, babe, let's just like, do we really need it? So people, people buy emotionally and they justify logically. So you want to get the deal done when they're emotional. And, uh, and they might be emotional about the bugs, but also like that discount can kind of make them emotional, right? Um, so you're trying to stir up that kind of like, there's a deal going on, and there's a trend going on in your neighborhood, and this is what's happening, and you want to be a part of it, right? Okay. Um, and this is just like, I, I wanted to kind of do this before we throw, because this basically like walks through everything we just reviewed, but lead with the need. So you're going to ask the, the two questions, which are going to then help you go and diagnose the need, right? So, um, you're going to figure out if they have a current issue by asking questions. If not, then you're going to kind of play to like future tense stuff. And then the value is all about like what my technician is going to do. So now you're pro you're solving their problem. So you found a problem and now you're going to solve that problem with what my technician is going to do when he comes. So if someone has an ant problem, let's say, and they like admit it to you, what might I focus on when I'm talking about my technician and what he or she is going to do? When it comes to like the application of the product, like what should I kind of zero in on when it comes to ants? Yeah, like how are they getting inside the house, right? So I'm going to talk about like that foundation treatment. Okay, we treat a couple feet up and out around the base of the home. We can do the inside of your kitchen where you're seeing the ants. Um, and if they're like coming up through, you know, the grass or whatever, we'll granulate that. 
uh, so it'll help with that. So you're just speaking your, to like, hey, here's the solution to your problem that you're seeing. If they have webs up in their eaves, like around the lights and it's up, you know, high on their home, what what might I speak to when it comes to like what my technician will do? Clean it up. Yeah, love it. We're gonna we're gonna clean it up, make it look good, and then we're gonna put some product up there that's gonna repel the spiders from coming back, so that you don't have to worry about that. So that your lights will stay and you don't have to worry about that. Um, so anyway, you you want to tailor it to their situation when it comes to the value, and then. Um, at the end, right before you get into rate card, which is what we're gonna to teach tonight, you wanna to make this little plug for urgency. A really, a line I like to use a lot here is I like to look at the customer and I like to go, um, cool Ian, so um, like I said, I'm in the area for the next day or two, and if you'll work with me on the timing, then I am willing to help you with the price. I have some flexibility on price if you'll help me out with the timing. Um, so let me show you what that price looks like. So that's like my urgency line that I like to use. Um, you're, you're like reminding the customer of that tone that you set early on in the interaction where you told them, my trucks are here, I'm trying to fit people in, right? Any questions on this as far as review goes? Cool. So I'm gonna turn it over to Kyron who is going to cover um, the rate card tonight and then at the end, I'm gonna do kind of a big, oh, I'm, I'm just, just kidding. Forgot about this part, we're not there yet. <laughs> so we already did this. We're gonna, um, I've asked a couple people to come up and uh, we're gonna do an inspection review, but they're gonna, I'm gonna throw this objection at them. So we're gonna keep building this muscle of like getting good at, um, what's that? This is mine. Oh yeah, Tanner, <laughs> let's do it. I can't I'm, remember good. I'm fine with that. No, yeah. So yeah, Tanner's gonna do this. So I'll be the customer. So we're in the inspection. So this is the last part of our review. We're in the inspection. Um, and let's say you're explaining the scope of service and I jump in and I ask, is this a contract? So this is an objection that you'll often get on the inspection, right? Sometimes people are nervous about contracts. So I'm gonna have Tanner show you guys how to address this concern. Very rarely will you go through an inspection without a customer asking an honest question or giving an objection like this. So I wanted to show you guys that this is just part of the game. And again, you're gonna use that same process and then push the conversation forward, okay? So um, so yeah, yeah, the last thing that we do is we just put some granulars in the yard, which just gives us an extra barrier protection so those can't take place. Okay. Is this a contract? Yeah, great question. You were mentioning that you had pest control in the past. Is that right? Yeah, it's been two, three years, but okay. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't remember entirely like what they did or whatever. Sure. Yeah. So this is honestly going to be pretty similar to what you had. Yeah. Okay. So we come out at least for twelve months, guarantees our work, and then after that, a lot of our customers end up sitting out with us just for preventive measures. Sure. Keeps those customers come back and they're pretty satisfied. Sure. Yeah, let me uh, 12, 12 months. I tried it for a year. Yeah, at least 12 months. And then after that, it just goes on a basis. Is there a, um, so if I do it for the 12 months, there's no key or whatever after after that to cancel? Yeah, great question. Yeah, so just like what you had before, there's a cancellation fee within that 12 month period. Okay. And again, that's just because in order to guarantee our work, we do have to come out on a quarterly basis 12 times during that year. Okay. That way, you know, you're not spending a bunch of money and then the bugs not disappear, right? Right. Because there is a process, it's not just like, so sure. try it out for a year. After that, you like it, keep the discount, and then it just goes on a monthly basis. Okay. Yeah. But uh, let me show you what that discount looks like. Okay. Cool. Good. That was awesome. Thanks. Let's give it a huge hand. That was awesome. Uh, what'd you guys like on that? Maybe just like two or three things that you noticed that he did really well there. Yeah. I just like his rhythm. Like the whole time, he's very just like, like what we with it, I don't know how else to put it, but yeah. you just have like a sort of flow that is really easy to follow. Yeah, he feels like he has like authority and confidence and like he's like holding my hand and like guiding me through the process, which is awesome. Did you notice at the end there, one thing I just like wanted to point out is at the end there, he moved it forward, right? Like once, once you've addressed someone's concern, your role as the rep is to push it to the next like goalpost, if that makes sense, right? So he spoke to it, I was cool with it. 
um, your kind of your temptation will be like to like wait to let the customer kind of like um, control the convo from there, and you have to guide them. Like that's literally the word I like is like guide guide the customer to the next step in the process. And in this case, he hadn't shown me rate card yet. So that was his close. So he was like, well, let me show you what the price looks like. Because he did an awesome inspection with need, value, and urgency. So in his head, he's done this long enough to know a next step is I got to show them the price. Right? Karen? Yeah, I thought his flow was really, really good. Like he uh, <clears throat> kept the sale moving forward without being too pushy. Really yeah, like that. love it. Cool. Okay, we're going to do this next one. So I just want to give a couple of these examples to you. So is it safe? This is another one. Some of these, honestly, guys, like I want to just, I wanted to say this. Sometimes we think of these as objections and they're just like honest questions, if that makes sense. Sometimes like, dude, they're just, they want to know, like they have a kid or a pet and like, they just want to know if it's safe and they're not like nervous about it. So don't make these a, a, a super big deal. Sometimes you're just simply like kind of answering the question as you're using the empathy to the response close partner yeah um i thought with is it safe it, i think that's a buying sign because mm. they can see Love themselves that. having their service and the first thing that they think about when they have their home treat is if it's going to affect their dog or their kid right so yeah. every time i hear this i'm getting this up that's exactly how I think of this. Event. I love that. No, I love that mindset. Yeah. Okay, I actually asked you to do this, I think, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> cool. All right. So this one, let's say I'm in the need section or you're in the need section. So like early in the inspection, uh, we're talking about bugs. And cool. uh, so kind of earlier on. Awesome. Yeah. I, I know you mentioned on the front door, just seeing a few of the little tiny ants. Yeah. Is that mainly inside or outside? Um, we, we get them in the kitchen okay. and then we see them like on the papers out here out back. Okay. The stuff you're using, um, uh, one concern I had, like, uh, I was just talking to my wife on the way out, but do you use like, um, chemicals or like, is it safe, like safe? I'm yeah. a little bit worried yeah, about that. that. Yeah, oh, that's kind of a hippie. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah that, that's a, that's a great question. It's actually, uh, super useful. Um, it's totally safe to use the chemicals. Uh, really? Really? Um, what we do to really take care of those ants so we didn't have any in the yard is we film way good. Awesome. Let's give them a hand. How's it going? Again, at the end there, what did he do? Like, at once he spoke to it, where did he go? He went to value because he, because we're in need, right? So, like, he's in the need section. But he just naturally knows, like, okay, I spoke to that and I'm in the need section still. I haven't spoken yet to like, how I'm going to get rid of this stuff. So, he just naturally transitions into value. Um, so, some of this stuff is like, it's so awesome because they're, they're guiding the customer to that next step in the sale, what the customer needs in order to get ready to buy and see the price, right? So, what did you guys like? Maybe one or two thoughts, John? I, I actually never thought of it as like that's a buying sign. Yeah, I, um, I love that. Just like watching him do it and in my mind, just like thinking like, oh, like this is a buying sign. I feel like if you have that mentality that it is something like they're interested in and this is them like expressing that to you. Yeah. I feel like the confidence just kind of like pulls it through and he shows that yeah. perfectly. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's a cool mindset shift. I, I really do like that too. Tanner. This tailored response is like super short and simple, right? Like it's really easy to go and explain why it's super safe. Like these are the chemicals we need, whatever. But it keeps it short and simple because it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. Tailored response is a, a fancy word for a phrase for logic. Sometimes you don't give enough logic. Sometimes you give too much, right? So if, if Parker was just like, uh, customers like, is it safe? Oh yeah, good question. It is close <laughs> like there's not enough meat on that bone you know it's like okay cool well i'm just taking your word for it then bro like give me a little bit so his tailored response was what what did he use for his tailored response to give me enough either i needed enough on that bone to be able to go back to my wife and be like dude it's safe i promise like we're not going to kill our dog you know so what, what what was that what was that logic that helped me feel comfortable as the customer when he spoke to your kids and your dog and like the evidence for abuse. What was the evidence? Abuse at hospitals. Yes, money. Kids. I love that as part of your tailored response. We treat in a, in, a, in a lot of areas like commercial accounts, like daycares, hospitals, vet clinics, and and so you can use that as like a name drop or a reference. 
And, you know, their mind goes to like, oh, if you're treating in those places, like my house is going to be okay, you know. So, Megan, did you have something? Or were you going to say something? Yeah. Cool. So, yeah, the big thing, not too much. You can overdo it too, right? Like, uh, short, shorten it up. It needs to be enough logic to make them feel comfortable. But sometimes you get so long-winded and, and, and it's like, the more long-winded you get, you almost look actually like nervous. Like you're, you have something you're hiding or something, you know? Did you have something, Karen? Yeah, on this one, I, I love the one-liner just to like make it kind of a joke. Mm. This is perfect. I, I love doing this one as well as when they're like, little poncho, like what if he like licks the wall, you know, I'll be like, yeah, it'll turn him purple. And they're like, oh, what? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. They're safe for the dogs. And they're like, oh, okay. Yeah. It just kind of like diffuses the, the objection. They're yeah. just like, yeah, you're right. That was a silly okay. question. Like, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like, yeah, like it might make them sick for a couple of days. You know, it's like, <laughs> like oh, yeah, I'll turn them purple. Yeah. And I like shake my head and they're like, what? <laughs> yeah. uh, you can, humor can be used really well with this. Like, also with contracts, too. Uh, yeah, like, yeah, we just attach it to like a 30 year mortgage, you know, <laughs> or like, uh, <laughs> Yeah. But and then when you back off that, there that's a sales move is like when you set that in their mind of like, oh, this is scary, and then you you move off it, it like lightens the conversation. It can be a really nice move. So thanks for bringing that up. Humor can be amazing in these situations for sure. So okay, last one, and then I want to get into the rate card thing, but um do I have to be home? I don't think I asked anyone to do this, did I? I think I was just gonna do this for myself. Uh Great question. And again, this is like not an objection. This is a question. So do I have to be home? Uh, great question. It's really simple. We just need you home for the first 15 minutes. I might say like, there's a quick welcome call that the technician's going to do with you to make sure that like I told you the truth and that you understand like what you're doing. Um, and then you can head out if you wanted to. And then I, again, I close. So yeah, what, what time of day would work best for you? Okay. So any questions on this? Biggest takeaway is you got to know that sales map, right? Like the thing I started with, you got to know like the steps of it. Because after you do your three things, like empathy, give them some logic. My clothes, you won't know what clothes to use if you don't know where you're at in the on the football field, right? It's like, I got to get my next first down. What's my next first down? <laughs> and so some of these guys that showed this, I thought it was so good because they just, they've done this long enough and they just naturally know like, this is my next move. This is where the customer needs me to go next. Um, and you don't need to make it up. Like you don't need to re reinvent the wheel. We are, we know where you need to go. You just need to kind of learn it, you know? So, okay. I'm going to turn it over to Kyron. He's going to teach um, a rate card. This is what a rate card looks like. You can start with this and then we'll get that next slide. So thanks for having me. Cool. Yeah. I'm excited uh, to teach a little bit about the rate card. So like Parker was saying, so this is your next um, first down, getting closer to the sale. So if you get someone to rate card, you are definitely getting closer to that first sale. So when you start the summer, this is what your rate card is going to look like. So you either get a slick or it'll be on your iPad. So this part of the sale is when we're finally going to be giving the customer the price of our product. So they asked us on the front porch how much this was. And now we've done all of this and now we're finally telling them the price. So the rate card can be a big tool in helping us to solidify the sale. Um, those that have done this before, what, like why would the rate card be used as a tool for us? This is where like your vis vis visualization of half off is going to come into play. Like yeah. you've been talking about half off this whole time. Now you're finally going to show them like what that actually means. Um, and so that can be a, a huge tool with like, if you're working the numbers correctly, like to really slide, like get the customer like excited about the service. Yeah, awesome. It's super, it's super helpful for the customer to be able to have something in their hands. And like look at something instead of just hearing you, because yeah. you could just be like making stuff up, but you can't just like change the numbers that are printed on a sheet really fast. Yeah, so. exactly. So I, I love that. Um, so we were salespeople, right? Like people 
have notions. And so people do business with people that they like and trust. And the more that you can build trust with that customer, the more likely you're going to make the sale. So showing them and having a visual where they're actually able to connect your words to something that's actually tangible is going to uh, increase validity. So, so we've designed the rate card in a way to help us with that process. So we talked about at the end of the inspection, um, that urgency statement. So when you, you've gotten through the inspection, you've built your need, you've built your value, you want to remind them like why you're in their backyard, why you're having the discount. So Parker just talked about that. So that's that urgency statement right before you're showing them the rate card. Because a lot of times they're gonna forget. You talk to them about a lot of things. And so you remind them saying, hey, um, like I was saying, my trucks are gonna be here if you're willing to work with me on the time, I can definitely help you with the price. So <clears throat> we bill monthly in all the markets we're in. So we, we're gonna be treating their homes quarterly or once per season. And so you're gonna tell the customer that. So you're gonna tell them that we're gonna come four times a year or once per season. And uh, we break it down into small monthly payments or small monthly chunks. So people are not, uh, people are a lot of or used to monthly payments, right? Everyone has subscriptions, they pay their mortgage monthly, Everyone's, everyone pretty much budgets monthly. So it's super simple to them. And when I explain the rate card, I wanna to try to be as simple as possible because um, this is when we're finally talking about their money. Um, and so we want to keep it super simple and not complicated because the more we complicate it, the more it, it's gonna be complicated to them. So, awesome. So. We've done our urgency statement and we say, so how it works is we come four times a year um, and we just break it down into small monthly chunks. Let me show you how that works. So usually we're like, like Parker is saying, we, we, we're looking them eye to eye and then we're going to have our slick or our clipboard and you're going to either like hand it to them so they can hold it or you're just going to kind of uh, get shoulder to shoulder. Yeah. So you, so like, let me show you how this works. Okay. So you get like shoulder to shoulder with them and it's you and uh, that, like your customer looking at this. You don't want to kind of be like, yeah, let me show you how this works. <laughs> or you don't want to like kind of go like that. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you're side to side. So yeah, let me show you how this works. And uh, for, for a home your size, so you can see, uh, you can't see it back here, but it has all the square footages on this side and then it has a monthly and then an initial. So on this one, it says for zero to 2,000 square feet, their initial is 359 bucks and their monthly is 59. So you say normally for a home your size, it's only 59 bucks a month. Normally that initial is $359, but if we can fit them over here, we'll drop that all the way down to just 59 bucks. So that's where you drop the price and then you break you break that distance. You don't want to be in their personal space for too long. So you, you break, you drop that down to 150, and then you want to make sure to close. Uh, this is super important. Actually, why would you think this is important right after you drop price to, to go into a close? Why would you think that's important? Uh, so this is emotional. And so when you get emotional about a really good price like that, then that's when you put the head, hammer on the head and you just go for it. Yeah, awesome. Anything else? Okay, Closes so are how we move the sale forward. So if we don't close, then the sale just the stack as it stops. Yeah, absolutely. So this is like uh, super important. You, you just drop price to them and you don't want them to like, you don't want them to just sit and steam on that price. <laughs> <laughs> like 150 bucks, well, I wasn't planning on that, you know, so. You want to drop that discount and then just go straight into that close and be very assumptive. So there's a soft close and a hard close. So the first one is, are mornings or evenings usually better for you? And then the second one would be, um, usually after that, it's just uh, perfect. I just need to go 
quick info, and then is there a good place for us to come? <laughs> uh, cool. So I'll just go ahead and show it, and then go from there. Cool. Okay, cool. Yeah, so like I was saying, our trucks are going to be in the area the next day or two, right? And if you're willing to work with me on the timing, we can definitely help you with the price. Okay. So let me show you how that works. Okay. We come just uh, four times a year, mm -hmm. and we just break it down into monthly chunks. Mm -hmm. So here, here's the price. Okay. So for a home your size, it's only 59 bucks a month. Okay. Normally that initial is $359, but if we can fit in while we're here, we drop it all the way down to 100 bucks. Um, our mornings or evenings generally go better for you. Um, we're here. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah, super quick. I just got some contact info. And if, yeah, you have not reserved. Okay. Um, is there a good place to get it down? Uh, we can start here. That's cool. Fine. Yeah, that should work. Cool. Good. That was awesome. Right, cool. <laughs> any any questions on that process? <clears throat> what did you guys like about that? So. Um, yeah, just like what you saw there. That was perfect. Like textbook, rate card, presentation. Parker. Yeah, uh, Connor was super confident and he spoke really slow. Yeah, I love what he said on like when you're talking about other, other people's money, like if you want it to be simple and clear, right? Like if you're talking fast here or it's not, it's if it sounds complicated, like for people, complicated sounds expensive, you know? It's, if it's complicated, there's probably some gotcha or some big fee or whatever. And like, so you want to stay just really, really simple, which I think you did a great job of. Any other takeaways on, yeah? Um, he assumed the sale, which is super important to do. You always just assume the sale. So without the guy, you, yeah. <laughs> the yeah. customer saying like, okay, yeah, it. I'm going to do that. Or like, yeah. let's do it. It's just our mornings or evenings are usually better. Yeah. Like he's already going to say yes. You sold a lot last summer. Tell me like what that... Like what happens when you don't assume the sale at the very end? Like if you give, let's say Kyron in this situation gives me the price, sure. and like he said, like you, the the customer just like stewing on that price. Like it's just so that what that would sound like is like monthly it's fifty nine bucks. Mm -hmm. That's all it is, and then uh, the first one is instead of three hundred dollars, it's just one hundred fifty dollars without the close. Like what? Cool. <laughs> yeah, it's like what happens in that situation based off of your experience last summer? Uh, nothing. <laughs> yeah. So you just assume the sale. If you give them time to think about it, they're gonna think of more of them. Yeah. But they might not even have. There's knee jerk reaction looking for more excuses. Yeah. So you just assume it and then you keep. Okay. Yeah. Who who's heard of the phrase ABC? I'll always be closing in sales. <laughs> you gotta close. Like you gotta like you gotta be the last one that get that gives that invitation, right? Um, on missions we called it inviting. <laughs> And in sales, we call it closing. So anyway, <laughs> similar vibes, different intentions. Um, Parker. Yeah, sorry to talk a lot. But no, I think something I kind of really, really well is, as well, I guess, would be you use past word. Uh, yes. I just want to speak to that maybe, but you definitely want it to be, this is what it is. It's not about, it's not kind of, this is what it is. Yeah, I have a tendency and, and, some of you guys are worse than I am with the, the likes and the and abouts and the maybes. I don't know what it is, but it's like our generation is really good at just like, ah, we don't, I don't want to offend anyone, so I'm just going to use all these like softening words, right? When you're talking about people's money, it has to be confident. So you want to be using just this instead of about this. You'll have this tendency to be like, it's like this or it's about this. And when you're grown, dealing with grown people <laughs> that have a real job and it's their hard earned money, you gotta be exact with it. So I really appreciate that comment. It's, it, it usually is this. If you'll give me a shot while I'm here, I'll do it for just this. And then it close. So any last takeaways from, from this? This is an awesome, um, if you're hired and you have Slack, I would invite you to go and find this. So this is in module number five. This is all the objections that you can get throughout the whole process. So like during the initial approach, insider response, like throughout the whole thing, these are this lists off like all the objections that can come throughout the whole process, okay? And if you get really, really good at this, you will make a ton of money this summer. If you get really good at knowing how to speak to different, um, each, each objection, 
And again, there's a three-step process for every single one of these. Empathy, tailored response, close. Empathy, logic, close. Every time um, on all these. So I just wanted to show you this. Uh, we, we created this, and I think it's one of the better handouts that we have. Okay. Any uh, key takeaways from tonight? <laughs> just what did you, like what did you learn? What do you want to take away going forward from from tonight? Maybe a first year. Yeah, Jackson. I like the assume the sale. Never heard it before, but loving confidence is confidence is key and cliche for a reason. Yeah. So. Yeah. Sales is all about being confident, and like he or she who is more convicted and more confident usually wins. <laughs> And um, that's a scary thing when, like, you know, you're at their house and on their turf. But uh, you'll learn so much if you can learn how to do that. It's huge. But thanks for sharing that. Assume the sale. Assume that they want it. That's that's really big. What else? Huh? Just, like, keeping it simple. Less is more. I think, like, the tailored response a lot of times. Sometimes I think I have to just, like, add in all this fluff. And yeah. make it sound like, okay, it's totally good. But yeah. sometimes just keeping it more simple is better. Love that. To, to finish that thought, one of the, my favorite things to think about when I think of just like my tailored responses is I want enough truth, but not like, um, I, I want just enough truth or just enough information that will turn their position from a no to a yes or, or give me a good shot to do that at least. Because sometimes you just, you know, it won't work. Like you're not going to turn them, but you got to, you got to play your game and do the best you can. But yeah, sometimes less is more, like less words is, um, is awesome. And here's one bone I have to pick with some other companies in our industry is they reps get on the doors and talk, 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 talk. And you've, you've noticed like learning our pitch is it's introduce yourself, tell them why you're there, engage the customer, get them talking. Um, but I just, I, I believe that sales people are actually way more refreshing when they share just enough truth to get the deal done and not too much to where they feel like we're like silver tongue in them and just trying to like share everything that we can, you know? I don't know if that makes sense, but I like I like in sales when it's not too much. What uh what else? Yeah. Acting on the emotions. Love it. Yeah, if they're emotional, you can let it be emotional. Um you want to kind of mirror them and echo them in that regard. But we talked about emotions today, like pest control is an emotional sale. That's okay. Lean into it and try to close down deals when they're in their peak emotion state. Anything else? Yeah. You need to be assertive. It doesn't mean you need to be aggressive. Yeah. But it should be. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Be confident. Assertiveness is super important. Um, love that. Anything else, Tanner? I guess kind of going off with that, like you're the boss in this situation. Like they're stepping into your office space, which is like, their backyard, right? But like, they don't know anything about bugs like you do. Like yeah. They're professional, so kind of like the mechanic. You're showing them what we're doing, and then you're giving them a price, and like you're assuming like they want to fix the engine, which is like for them taking care of the bugs they have or being able to prevent. Love it. And so if you act like the boss, like people will see you and respect that authority in your way. Yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> anything else before we finish out? Yeah. I thought something that was cool was. Um, Sharing examples with them that kind of creates them to become emotional. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, what was what was one of those tonight? Remind me. Um, when he was talking about the doctors and the daycare. Yeah. I thought just like them thinking about oh they go here oh I need that in my home. I love that. that. Makes it more like personal to them. Yeah, sales like storytelling and giving examples is like there's nothing more powerful than that in sales. Uh, so that's a great thought. I love that. Yeah. Any any last ones? Cool. So your homework is to keep practicing. Like get with your manager, put in the reps, put in the time. You will get an amazing return on it. This job changed my life in my twenties, and it can change yours. Like, but it will be. You will get out of it what you put into it. If you show up not knowing what the heck you're doing, you will get kicked in the teeth. <laughs> like, no. Learn the pitch. Practice it. Um, and yeah, this is like this is such an amazing job and opportunity. I cannot express that enough. Like uh, your ability to go and bet on yourself, and if you want to pay raise, you just go work harder or go get better at this stuff, and you can make an extra three hundred, five hundred, a thousand dollars a day simply by 
um, st stuff that you control, like it's in your control, you know? So um, anyway, love you guys. Thanks for coming tonight.